Good morning, class. Uh, the topic today, today we're going to, uh, the, the topic of our course is, uh, is uh, as you know, um, operating system. But let me begin with asking you a, uh, one thing I always do. Put your phone vibration. I just did put my phone in vibration so it will not disrupt us uh, during the lecture. So, and before I'm talking about the operating system, let me begin uh, the course by asking you three set of three simple questions. What is the most important important topic of uh, mathematics? Calculus, the answer is obvious, calculus. Who invented calculus? Isaac Newton. Why did he invent calculus? He invented calculus to solve the falling moon problem. You know, one day um, in 1600s, he was sitting down under a tree. All of a sudden, he saw an apple fall from above. And with that fall of the apple, he changed the entire picture of the universe by simply asking, if the apple fall, does the moon also fall? That led him to invent the calculus. So obviously calculus is the most important topics of, of mathematics. And also the calculus, especially differential calculus, led to the invention of, invention of computer. You know, those of, those of you who don't know, this is true. You know, back in 17, 17, 1840s, you know, uh, uh, the, the Charles Babbage, he was not the father of computers. He was not at all a computer scientist, even there was no computer at the time. So he was a mathematician and physicist. He was trying to solve some differential calculus problem, but those calculus problem took him a long time to solve, so he couldn't do other important things. So he was thinking whether to invent some kind of machine to solve those ugly long differential equation, differential calculus problems so he can do other things. So he ended up inventing a mechanical computer. Charles Bevis, why did he invent that? To solve calculus. To, let's just for the sake of it, let's give you an example of how that differential equation even look like. I'm not trying to make this operating system course a math course, but everything relates to math. They invent, they invent computer to solve, not to watch video games, obviously, to solve the math problem, especially differential equation that all the way back to Newton that I just described that Newton invent calculus to solve the falling moon problem and then the Charles Bevis invented computer to solve those ugly lots of variables differential equation let's let's see how differential equation look like those of you who never seen differential equation um, well let's see What oh this this is like a baby differential equation. This is like a hello wall person of differential equation. What is the baby programming of computer science? Hello wall. This is like a hello wall person of differential equation. It will take like two seconds to solve it. But uh, but let's see how we can solve that. So let's put one over here and do the cross multiplication. Let's see what happens when you do cross multiplication. dy over cosine x dx and this integrate both sides. And when there is nothing, we always put one because one doesn't change the value, so we'll put one. We're not gonna put one over here because there is something over there. So when you integrate dy, what do you get? you get just simply y, and when you integrate cosine x, what do you get? Sine x plus c. Now, um, sine, sine x, sine x. Now, you know, this guy is x, this guy is y, so we're gonna replace that. So we're gonna put minus y here, minus one here, 
and then we're going to put sign x is 0 this is x so x is 0 plus c so you know in uh, in uh, in unit circle you know this one is 0 1 1 0 this is sine this is this is cosine this is sine so sine 0 is simply 0 so negative 1 is 0 plus c so c is the negative 1 this is the solution to this differential equation it is a very differential equation that's why it took us only two seconds but Charles Babbage we want to solve bigger problem with a lot of variables so he did not have time some differential equation takes like five days just to solve that not five seconds so he thought there there should be some kind of machine to solve this problem so he end up inventing what we call now computer and 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 let's go back to asking you the second question remember i asked you what is the most important topics of math and the answer you gave me is calculus now let me ask you what is the most important topic of physics the most important topics of physics you may say is uh, is a special relativity or uh, maybe the general theory of relativity but uh, or you may say that quantum but no 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 the most important topic uh, of physics is mechanics if you don't pass mechanics there would be no science career for you you need to first understand the newtonian law to even go to the next step i understand law heisenberg law Schrodinger law but you have to first master in, in classical mechanics and electromagnetism that two part of mechanics you know very important you know 70 percent of the student who aspiring to become engineer astronaut scientist this and that they fail in this two course and they end up changing their subject from science to something else so that's the most important subject of physics is just uh, that mechanics and the most important subject of math is calculus you don't understand calculus math is not for you then let me ask you my final question what is the most important topic of computer science and computer engineering it is operating system it is operating system the topic the the topic of our course our course gonna cover all the small and big topics from cpu scheduling to virtual memory of operating system so Okay, so this is May, what day is today? May 9th. Okay, um, all right. So, so, yeah, so the most important topic of computer science business is operating system, but to understand what is operating system is, is as is in, is 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 very important because that's the heart of computer business and computer engineering so let's begin our lecture by asking you another simple question what is computer because operating system is an operating system to 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 rule the computer to operate the computer so we have to understand what is computer so let's try to understand what is computer um, the computer is um, is a the computer is a general purpose device to carry out um, general purpose device that which can be programmed to carry out 
of a set of arithmetic and logical calculation on data. What is data? The data is simply the information, you know, we receive information when we need to find some information. What do we do? We read New York Times or we watch CNN, we find the information, we happy. But the computer cannot read New York Times or can, computer cannot watch CNN. How the computer get information? It get information by human being. Ooh put information to the computer using keyboard and how do we put information to computer? We're not going to say do it. We put information to the computer as a data and what is data? Data is nothing but the binary digit, zero or one. When we type something, computer decoded. We type some data to the computer using keyboard computer decoded and convert it and convert the data to the binary, binary digit that called zero and one. So that is data. So information for, what is information for us is data for computer. What is, what is letter for us, A to Z, 26 letter, is just, just the binary digit for computer. You know, you may think zero and one is two, how can computer do everything using only two numbers? Well, you know, the letters are not that many, only 26, one to Z, but we can write, Shakespeare wrote 32 books using, uh, using the 26 letters. He never ran out of any letter. You can do anything you want with this 26 letter. Think that analogy of that's how computer can use only two numbers, zero and one, to do any, any calculation, to perform any operation on any information. It never, never, never ran out of number because zero and one is enough for computer to do operation on any kind of data, large or small. Um, um, yeah, I, I have been, I should have been a little careful, not any kind of data. If data is too large, then we're going to come to that later. We're going to come to the idea of quantum computers. So let, let's, let's just wait a minute and then let's mm, try to discuss the, 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 the classical computer first and then we're going to move to the quantum computer. So the, 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 the classical computer consists of three major component. Well, let's first, um, this is now computer, right? So this is, there are two different, uh, different, um, talking about uh, quantum computer, let's just describe them together. Uh, if I, uh, if as, if I'll try, I'll try my best to make it possible. It is, it is like a different world, quantum computer, but I'll try to, I'll try to accommodate the information so that uh, you can understand. So classical computer, quantum computer. So classical computer has three main parts, um, CPU, then memory, and then the I.O. 
um, CPU, memory, and I.O., these are the three main part of classical computer, and we can break down the CPU into, um, into branches. It's a control unit, and then the process unit. We can further break process unit in three uh, different component. We can say um, added logic, logic unit, arithmetic, and sequential. So um, it's use the Boolean logic to do the operation on data using the added. Uh, the arithmetic operations plus uh, minus uh, multiplication and the division. So uh, now, now is is uh, the data to be decoded by by binary digit using the Boolean logic with the help of the arithmetic operation plus minus multiplication and uh, and uh, and division. So. So with that, let's try to understand the, 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 the how the bit thing works, how computers, how the CPU uses the Boolean logic to perform operation on data that provided by the user you, like you and me. Um, So, so the if the if the first one is false and the second one is false, A and B is simply false. If the first one is false, second one is true, A and B is simply false. If the first one is true, second one is false, this is also false. Both true, then it is true. And A and B is just opposite. So this is zero, this is one, this is zero, this is one, this is zero, this is one, and this is one. This is zero, and we can derive a logic K using this. And um, and that's the that's the that's the basic thing of classical computer using the using the using the integra integrated circuit and transistor and transistor computer can perform what is any anyway, what is the integrated circuit it is a conductor it is a Conductor mm, based on the silicon is an element. Those of you who want a, who want a little bit of chemistry, you know that the uh, that the that the silicon the atomic number is fourteen. That's not important, but important thing is that the computer takes the data from the human user as and convert it to the binary digit zero one using the using is control unit which is the three part logic, arithmetic, and sequential to far from the operation on data and gives you the output. And using the modern technology integrated circuit and transistor. And what is transistor? Transistor used to amplify electric signals to electric power so transistor what transistor do is used to amplify electric signal to electric power that enables the computer to do the operations on uh, on the data it receives from human um, it receives from human user 
So now uh, let's see the big picture as you remember that a few minutes ago I discussed how the computer, why people invented the computer. People did not invent computers so that you and me can watch some video games. They invent computer to do the mathematical problem, especially the differential equation, the, the differential calculus equation that invented by like four, 300, 350 years ago by calculus, going back to apple, then falling apple, falling moon, we discussed that, and that the Charles Babbage wanted to solve those big, ugly differential equation, it took long time. He thought he needs some kind of machine to do that. So he was trying to invent some machine. Many people before him also tried to invent, but couldn't quite do that. But Charles Bevers was a smart guy. He ended up inventing a machine called mechanical computer. The year was 1840. So Charles Bevers Charles Bevers invented a mechanical computer in invent mechanical computer in 1840. Why to solve this kind of equation? To solve a differential equation. This is just one variable differential equation. He wanted to solve a differential equation that has many variables, but his machine was only able to solve a problem like this just with one variable, but that's a big deal. That's, that was a groundbreaking um, invention. Uh, you know, I'm saying groundbreaking invention because, um, because, because um, now, now the machine can do what man is spent like five days to solve one equation, machine can solve it in one second. So what is the next big step of computer revolution is, uh, is Sir William Thompson. He invented an analog computer in 1872, some 30 years later. And word to solve a differential equation by integration. Now, the, his machine, his analog computer was a little bit more powerful than the mechanical computer invented by the father of computer, Charles Babbage. His machine could solve the little bit more uglier equation than this. This is not ugly equation. Um, he, this is just one variable. Um, this is just, this is just, this is just one variable. His machine, the analog computer could solve problem that has like 10, 20, 30 variables. It's a better machine than uh, the father of computer solves Bevis invented. So now let's see what is the next biggest step of computer. Let's put one, let's put some, uh, some sequence like timeline. Number three, who is the next big, a big step of computer business is MIT. Massachusetts uh, Institute of Technology that invented a differential analyzer. In 1927, so the next big state of a step of computer revolution was the invention of a differential analyzer by, by scientists of MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, that, that little guy in Boston next to the Harvard University contributed in computer business a lot. They invented a differential analyzer that could solve any kind of differential equation, not only the small differential equation, but also as big, as ugly as possible. So that was the 
that was the huge thing at that time made a lot of mathematicians and physicists happy. Um, and what is the next biggest step of computer business is the is the Alan Turing. He invented an what well, a machine called Turing machine. Well, uh, let's be honest. He didn't invent any machine. Um, he just wrote few papers, three, four, or five pages. You know, I just don't remember how long his paper was. You know, I want you to check that. You know, Google it and let me know tomorrow how long his paper was. Um, that paper, that small, not too long paper, led to the death of. Turing machine, what now known is Turing machine. What is Turing machine? All of a sudden, computer not only can solve the mathematical problem, calculus problem, but also can prove. So that Turing machine can prove the the the, the mathematical problem. The, the, that Turing machine, he he in his paper, uh, he just you know, uh, he just shows the way to prove the Gordon's equation. And that opens the new windows of using computer not only solve the math problem but also prove the math problem and opens the opportunity of using computer for to do the other thing, to do other kind of operations on, on the data that it receives from user. So let's, um, so he embed the Turing machine. You know, I, I remind you, Turing machine, I'm calling it machine. I don't know why I'm calling it machine. It's not a machine at all. He wrote few papers. That led to the invention of this meeting to, to not only solve the math problem, but also to prove the math problem. What is the next big thing of computer revolution? Is the Harvard. Now, you know, when the Harvard University saw that the little guy in Boston doing so much in computer revolution, the big guy Harvard, of course, you know, in Boston, uh, I mean, the Harvard, they think they rule the world, but, you know, uh, they think they are more powerful than White House. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. But the Harvard stepped up when they saw that the MIT is doing so much in computer, so they thought they had to do something. So uh, they step up and end up inventing Mark I, it now known as Harvard. Mark one. Uh, why did they invent that? They invent that not only to to beat uh, beat the MIT, uh, but also to help the White House winning the World War II. So that machine, that computer, uh, United States used the computer to beat Germany in World War II. I'm not going to go over that because the study of World War II is not uh, is not a good one. So uh, let's move to the next big step of computer revolution and that is the invention of transistor. And what a transistor do? Transistor is an amplifier to convert the electric signal to electric um, electric power so that the computer can take the data so that it can far from the operation on those data and give you the result uh, within a fraction of second. So transistor not only make um, the computer faster but also the rest response time was increased, the throughput was increased, the computer became smaller and one of a sudden computer became the, the more useful than it used to be. Now let's look at what is the next step after the transistor is the Fortran computer language. Fortran. This is the first computer language invented invented in 1954. Now those of you know a little bit of Java or C or or or, or whatever HTML. Um, you know, I should know that Fortran was, Java was not the first one or C plus was not, C was not the first one. The Fortran was the first one invented in 1954. So Java or C, 
is like you know grandchildren of this high level computer language um, so that enable a human to write some code so that the computer follow remember the definition of computer is a general purpose machine that can be programmed programmed by what programmed by photon so that it can can do some kind of logical and mathematical operation on data. So now the first time the human invented some kind of high level language to program the computer so the computer can, can, can follow the instruction of human. And what is the next biggest step of computer revolution? Is the integrator circuit. Uh, you remember I just discussed a few minutes ago the integrator circuit is 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 is, is, uh, is a conductor is a conductor based on silicon and you know I, I also mentioned those of you know a little bit of chemistry you know the the, the, the atomic number of silicon is 14 but that's not important the important thing is uh, integrator circuit make computer more efficient than ever before make it smaller and more useful and of course cheaper and number nine what is the next step of computer is the invention of microprocessor and that happened um, and then uh, microprocessor and microprocessor revolutionized the whole computer industry it makes computer faster cheaper smaller um, uh, and what is, let's look at the next step of computer revolution is the coming of Apple. That's not the same Apple Newton saw falling from above. This is a different kind of Apple, Apple one. The idea maybe Steve Jobs got that idea from, from, from you know, as I told you before that, you know, I put that in Java code, remember I put class Apple. So Apple is a big thing. It's not only beautiful fruit, but you know, it's, it's a big thing in the science, math, and the technology industry because the inspiration comes from that 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 Newtonian Apple. When Apple falls, Newton asks a simple question: If the Apple falls, does the moon also fall? That simple question, you know, kind of kind of end up becoming the greatest question any human being ever asked since we separated from monkeys in Africa some seven million years ago. So that apple keeps coming back and back. Steve Jobs got that idea and used that in his own computer. He calling it Apple One and then Apple One came in 1984. Now computer is not only belongs to the mathematicians and and scientists now one of all of a sudden computer become you know the, the the people like you and me start using computer because thanks to Steve Jobs it it came out in 1984 guess what what is the next biggest step in computer revolution if 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 if, if there was um, uh, there was there was Einstein because there was Newton so there was uh, what followed by uh, by Apple is 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 Windows. So eleven. Um, so um, MS DOS. MS DOS came around, I believe, nineteen nineteen eighty. Let me correct it. This one was 1976, and this one is 1981. So Steve Jobs and 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 Steve Wozniak, they they invented they invented Apple One, and then they released it to the market in 1976. And after five years, Bill Gates came out with new kind of, although similar, but new kind of operating system and they're called DOS, MS-DOS and five years later 1981. Now what is the next thing you can imagine the next biggest step of computer is also 
um, uh, contributed by the same guy, Steve Jobs. His Macintosh operating system came 1984. Operating system, 1984. Macintosh operating system. So you know, as you may remember, our topic of this course is the operating system. Operating system. So here is the operating system that came in 1984 by uh, mainly contributed by Steve Jobs and Macintosh operating system hit the market in 1984. That followed by Bill Gates Windows operating system. 1985, back to back, back to back. They began the war in 1976, and then um, it followed by Bill Gates. He just re released um, MS-DOS, and then the Apple came out with new kind of operating system, Macintosh, and then the Bill Gates came out new kind of operating system called Windows operating system. So in this course, we're gonna our main con concentration, our focus narrow to the operating system of Macintosh and operating system of Windows. They are both, you know, in general, they both are the same. Um, but in the interface, they may be look different, but in general, uh, they are more or less same. But we're gonna talk cover the whole business of how the operating system of Macintosh and the, how the operating system of Windows, Unix, Linux that works. So the, the war that started in 1976 between Apple and Windows is still continues and um, it's a good war. Uh, this, this war makes the computer industry enrich and this is a very productive war between Apple and Windows, Microsoft. Um, and um, now we're gonna little bit talk about the quantum computing. So far we talk about the classical computing. Now our focus is gonna be on the quantum computing.